Hey you legends, it's Rick Carson and we're at Make Police Studios and today we're doing something very important. Trying not to I'm here with John Pitts and we're gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the Fender Death Cap. Death Cap. So what exactly is the Death Cap, John? So back in the day before our modern wiring in our houses, uh, most of your houses had two prong wiring. So. Uh, as you can see here, our amplifier has two prongs. The death cap was uh, a way for Fender to help filter out radio frequencies out of the power uh, by basically taking a capacitor and tying it to the chassis from your neutral wire of your amplifier. The idea was that if you plugged in your amplifier and it sounded a little noisy, you unplugged it, flipped over the plug, and replugged it back in the other way, that would flip the polarity of your amplifier. Uh, these days, we have grounded plugs that help you know filter out that radio frequency for us for making the uh, death cap absolutely obsolete. Problem being, if that capacitor ever fails, uh, what happens is it dumps 120 volts straight into the chassis of your amplifier, which has a way of, you know, finding its way through your guitar cable. So it's definitely something we want to uh, get rid of as a safety concern. So even though this thing is completely ridiculously broken and you could touch the whole side of this terminal plugging it in, you shouldn't take this cable and plug it into a power extension cable and then plug that into the wall because that will still kill you by playing your guitar if that death cap were to go. Yeah. And that's the big thing about the death cap is that it truly only becomes dangerous from my understanding when the capacitor finally dries out and dies. That's right. It's when the yeah when the ca capacitor basically uh, exceeds its shelf life and dries up, what happens is then it creates a dry short inside of that capacitor, which then once again, it's essentially at that point, it's a piece of wire. And it's dumping the voltage straight to ground, which can come back through your guitar cable and the right. strings and kill the shit out of you. Yeah, it so would not, it would hurt the entire time. It's not too hard to go about changing the death cap, right? Yep, so changing it out is honestly a very rudimentary procedure that if you have a soldering iron, there's chances are you can do this at home as well yourself. So we're gonna show you today about how to remove the death cap and then also install a properly grounded cable so that way you have uh, a safe instrument and amplifier to utilize. That being said, if you don't feel safe around electronics in any way, shape, or form, you should not be doing this. This is not this, for the faint of heart. This is not putting together an XLR cable. This is not building a guitar pedal. This can kill you. So we're gonna start by taking the back off of this amplifier. This is a 1965 Reverb Deluxe. There's the back. We're gonna take, remove this cable, or actually let's remove the tubes out of this first. Just gently wiggle them back and forth while pulling downwards and they should just pop right out. Fortunately, Fender always included a tube chart on the inside of your amplifier. So that way you know what order to put them back in. These preamp tube covers just push in and twist out. They're spring loaded. We'll disconnect our reverb tank. Usually these are color coded red for your input. Our speaker pops right out. And now we can take this cable stressor. And that should make all the cables be loose now. We'll remove these preamp tubes. Alrighty. And then the last thing to free this amplifier from its chassis. So we gotta take these. When you release these nuts from the amplifier, there's a little shelf here that the amp head can live on while you loosen it up. Pull these up. From there, we should be able to ever so gently remove the amp. Just like that. This is a beautiful, all original 1965 Fender Reverb on the inside. So here's the inside of our amplifier. If we rotate it a little backwards here, you can see our death cap is right here. 
So this is what we'll be removing today. As you can see, it is attached to our ground switch here in which our neutral is connected to. So when you flip this switch, it always be grounding out to the uh, the chassis essentially, regardless of what position this uh, ground is in. So let's get working on removing that. So if we flip this over, you'll notice that our death cap, the other side of it, goes through the chassis and connects to the chassis itself. So for our first step, we're gonna desolder this from the chassis. I'm gonna take our iron and just rest it on there, apply some heat. If you ever have old stubborn factory solder, it's helpful to add your own fresh solder to it as molten solder creates more molten solder. I'm gonna use a screwdriver once we get this uh, molten to remove our death cap lead out of the way here. Once you get that pried up from the chassis, you can flip it back over. And then you're gonna come back to the inside here and you're just gonna desolder it from the switch here. Honestly, the easiest way to go about this is you can go, just go ahead and snip it out. And that, my friends, is your death cat. Death cat. So. Now, let's replace this old two-prong cable with a newer three-prong cable with a proper ground and then properly ground our amplifier. So we're gonna come in. All these old amplifiers have these cable glands on them. And they're the worst things ever. But if you take one side of it and depress it, you should be able to wiggle it into the amplifier. And then the top lifts off, which crimps around the cable, and now our cable's loose. For ease of sake, we're just gonna clip this. This is dead to us. And here's where you're gonna, your two new leads are gonna connect. Your neutral wire is gonna connect to where the white wire, or yeah, the yellow one sword pond time might have been white wire, and your live will go to the other side. We've got an old IEC cable here that we're just gonna lop the end off to provide for our three prong cable. We'll stick this through here and ensure that we have enough slack to make it to where we need. We'll cut back some of the sheathing here to reveal our three cables. Black is gonna be your live wire, white is gonna be your neutral wire, and your brand new green is going to be ground. And then we're gonna go through real quick, and we're gonna tin or pre-solder your neutral and your live wire. And this is gonna make soldering it to the switch much easier. So we're gonna take our hot iron and we're just gonna take a little bit of solder and we're gonna apply it. So first we're gonna desolder our old neutral. And we'll solder in our new one. The other thing is you wanna make sure before we get too involved that this ground wire is gonna be able to reach a transformer nut and still be able to reach our points where our power connects. This one could use just a little bit more help. So we're just gonna strip just a tiny bit extra off of this. So, neutral wire. Once that's soldered in, make sure you give it a little tug test to make sure that is very solidly in there. We're good to go. We're gonna get rid of our old live wire now. 
right, tug test. Very good. All righty, we're almost there. We're going to okay, yeah. implement this ground. This ground wire is gonna go live underneath of one of these transformer nuts, and that will properly ground your amplifier. So just loosen up one of these nuts. What you do is create a little loop and hook it underneath your nut and torque it down. Once again, tug test, we're secure. We're gonna put our cable gland back on. So John, we've changed out the death cap and now this amp is ready to go. But most amplifiers this age, a lot of people want to talk about change out the capacitors. I have some thoughts on that. I'd love to hear yours. Very often with these older amps, are you going to find that you're probably going to need to have your amplifier recapped? The idea is that the capacitors over time on the inside of them, the material which we call electrolytic. Uh, because to dry up over time and therefore it changes the value of your capacitor and often not is what causes it to uh, fail very often which is the case of our death cap that's why we wish to remove it a lot of times you, with the older amps you're going to have to probably get them recapped just due to the age of the capacitors your amplifier is in very rare condition and happens to have very good ca looking capacitors so you might be able to get a little uh usage out of this one well that said if you're going to do a recap as something for to be reserved for your local friendly amplifier technician do not do this on your own make sure that you get consult a professional okay awesome and then you know just for some other stuff as far as general maintenance with an amp this old you know when it comes to the Tolex, you were saying that you prefer to use rubber cement to keep the Tolex down for these spots where the Tolex is peeling up a little bit? Yeah, what we often use uh, is I use contact cement, uh, which is a little different from rubber cement in that what happens is that it's an adhesive that you apply to both sides of uh, the materials that you're going to bond. So in this case, so with your Tolex, if it's starting to get loosened up, you go get some contact cement, apply some of it to the backside of the Tolex, and also apply a little bit to the uh, the amplifier cabinet itself. Let it hang out and dry for 15 minutes to allow it to get tacky, and then adhere them together, and it will adhere to itself very strongly. So I often recommend uh, contact cement for Tolex repairs. Okay, and what about Tolex cleaning? Uh, for Tolex cleaning, uh, I use a combination of, uh, I, I use greased lightning or uh, any uh, degreaser would be a good option for that to help get all the dirt and grime out of there. So uh, if you guys ever, and if you guys want to finish uh, and make your amp nice and shiny and clean, then I often use Armor All wipes to uh, help protect the finish of your amplifier. Awesome, yeah, I like using the Armor All wipes a lot. I think that they, you know, or, you know, I'm gonna say it right before you sell something on e Reverb or eBay. It helps to grab some armor all because it just looks great when you're done. It's a great way to make it shine and a uh, great way to uh, make your amp a perfect showpiece for your house. So this this deluxe, give it a rating. Oh, boy, Rick, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the nicer deluxe I've seen in a very long time. Uh, scale of one to 10, you got a solid nine and a half. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your help. Thank and you, I hope you have a wonderful day, man. You as well. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for hanging out with us today, internet friends. Mm -hmm.